The subject of this video will involve concepts that have some philosophical ramifications. Also, the math in the proof will be a little bit heavy. Though you may stop the video at the slide and stare at it, it should be possible to understand it. The concept is evidence about evidence. Here's an example. Pete usually tells the truth. He's recently phoned uh, you and told you it's overcast. He says he doesn't know if it's raining or not though. So that's evidence for overcast, right? And overcast is evidence for rain. Let's see clip 3. So if Pete tells you it's uh, overcast outside, is that evidence for rain? Imagine that there's a statement B whose truth value could possibly be absurd. If it was absurd, it would be evidence for a particular model C. However, you haven't directly absurd B. Instead, you've got data A that makes B more likely, i.e. you've got evidence for that statement. So have you now got evidence for the underlying model C, um, and how is it going to behave? You could condition on the probability of model C on B, but uh, that would be using more information than you've got. Conditioning on things you don't know is fine when you're considering several alternatives, but it's not what we're after in the end. You don't know that B is true, you only know that you've received data that is pointing towards B. If the data pointed very weakly to B, then you've hardly learned anything at all, and so you would hardly update your probability for C either. If the evidence for B is strong, you would expect that you got almost the same as if you knew that B was true. Let's put this in a more formal manner. Let's assume that the initial observation A is evidence for the statement B, that is the probability of B given A is greater than the probability of B. And using clip 8, uh, we now also know that the probability of B is greater than the probability of B given not A. Assume also that B is evidence for model C, so the probability of C given B is greater than the probability of C. So you've got this chain of evidence, A points to B and B points to C, where B is the middle assumption, hopefully binding A and C together. We need something more uh, to say that we got evidence about evidence rather than simply evidence. Uh, we've got to separate the initial observation A from the model C, and for this we need the concept of conditional independence. We don't want any dependence going directly between A and C without going through B. Conditional independence is when A and C does not uh, depend on each other if you knew the uh, truth value of B. That is, if the state of B is known, you'll learn nothing more about C by knowing A, nor will you learn anything more about A by knowing C. Put mathematically, the probability of C given A and B is the probability of C given B. And the probability of C given A and not B is the probability of C given not B. For instance, if you know it's overcast, knowing whether Pete has phoned you or whether he's lying will normally not tell you anything about whether it's raining or not. This assumption is broken if you have experience suggesting that Pete is more likely to lie when he knows it's raining than when he knows it isn't. But uh, Pete would have to be pretty weird uh, if this was the case. So assume that A is evidence for B, that B is evidence for C, and that A and C are independent condition on B. If we've observed A, do we then have evidence for C? Yes we do, and here's the proof. If you want to, you can uh, stop the presentation here if you want to soak up uh, the content of this slide. Note that the difference will depend on how strong evidence A is for B and how strong evidence B is for C. And this isn't the easiest proof in the world, but the job is done now. 
So if we got conditional in independence, then A will be evidence for C. Assume that P it phones and tells me it's uh, overcast. Well, I know now that uh, this is evidence for rain, i.e. this makes it more likely for me that it's raining. Let's put some more numbers on our example to see how it works. Uh, it's overcast 40% of the time and half of that time it's also raining. When it's not overcast it rains in 2% of the time. This means that it rains in 40% times 50% plus 60% times 20% 2% sorry, is equal to 21.2% of the time. So that's our prior belief for rain. Now if Pete phones and tells it's overcast, the probability for rain will be the probability for rain given overcast times the probability of overcast giving P tells it's overcast plus the probability of rain given not overcast times the probability of not overcast given that P tells it's overcast. Which is 45.2%. So the probability for rain has increased, in fact the probability has doubled and then a little. If you had known it was overcast instead of having to rely on P telling the truth, we would have landed on 50% probability of rain instead. It's worth noting that if we got evidence A for B, which is evidence for C, this will always be poorer evidence than if we had directly observed B. So the probability of C given A will always lie somewhere between our initial probability of C and the probability of C given the more direct evidence B. And the proof is here and uh, it's not as difficult as the last one but uh, you'll have to stop and look at the slide if you want to soak it up. The stronger the evidence A is for B, the less this difference will be. The weaker the evidence for B given A, the less A will affect the probability for C too. And you will of course not be convinced that C is the case unless B is strong evidence for C also. This result is good news for those of us who want to use probabilistic reasoning. Because we seldom have very direct evidence for anything in the real world. When you say your living room has a width of 5 meters, what you mean is that you seem to recall an experience where you measured the width of the living room and that result was 5 meters. But that is evidence for you actually having this experience. And if, as if this was so, there will be a causal connection between your memory and the real event. And if you had that experience of measuring, then that is evidence that this really was going on. And if this really was going on, and the result was a measurement of 5 meters, then this is evidence of your living room being 5 meters in width. What's really good about this is that you can repeat such measurement yourself, or even get somebody else to do it for you. If this independent measurement stabilizes somewhere around 5 meters, then you'll get as strong evidence as you want for that 5 meter width. As you understand, evidence about evidence about evidence will function as evidence about evidence, which will function as evidence. But the larger this chain becomes, and the less powerful each part of the chain, the weaker the chain becomes. It's not exactly as weak as its weakest link, though it's a bit weaker than that. And if you've got evidence against evidence of evidence, then the probability of the model will slink back towards the prior probability. For claims like that you got from Pete, the situation is not so good as for the measurement situation. If you hear claims spoken by other people, then you get only a one-off piece of information. It may be prudent to at least consider that the claim is based on evidence, and as such is evidence about evidence. From there on you got to consider the source, the type of claim and the typical reliability of such claims and how wild or tame the claims are. If you got evidence suggesting the claim is based on fiction rather than evidence then that would be evidence against evidence about evidence and would drag the probability down towards its uh, prior probability. 
uh, your probability for the contents of the claim before you heard it as a claim. The existence of claims themselves uh, will usually be nowhere near the extraordinary evidence needed for extraordinary claims. In order to work towards a consensus, it should be possible to gather as much evidence as is needed in order to convince yourself. Which is why data from repeatable controlled experiments is so great for building up real knowledge about the world.